And we can also relate the kinetic energy defect K to the profile drag. To do this, we're going to write P and K in terms of the velocity defect, delta U, which is U minus the edge velocity, UE. So if we do that, then P is the integral of UE minus U, rho U dn. Using our definition, we can write this as negative, integral of negative delta U, rho U. N. And k is the integral of one half u e squared minus u squared rho u d n. We can write that as negative delta u times u e plus one half delta u rho u d n. Uh, it may not be obvious where this term has come from. Let me explain that briefly. So if we rewrite this, this is negative delta u times ue plus one half delta u. That's equal to negative delta u times ue minus one half delta u squared. That's negative u minus ue. Now going back to the definition of delta u times ue minus one half u minus ue squared, which is negative u ue plus ue squared minus one half u squared plus u ue minus one half ue squared. These terms cancel, and this term partially cancels with this term, and we get back to one half u e squared minus one half u squared. Now, if we make the assumption that delta u is much smaller than u e, then we can approximate k as the integral of negative delta u times u e rho u d n because we are able to drop this term. But this comparing to p is just p times u e. Now this condition is not true everywhere but it is the case in the far downstream wake because there delta u tends towards zero because of the wake spreading and mixing. So in far wake, ue also tends towards v infinity. And so we get that k infinity, so k in the far away from the airflow is equal to p infinity times v infinity. And since the drag per unit span is just the far field momentum defect, then what we get is that the drag times v infinity is equal to k infinity, which is the integral over the airfoil plus the wake of the dissipation integral d. So this result can be interpreted as a power balance. So what this means is that the drag d must be balanced by a thrust force which also moves at speed v infinity. That, th that force therefore exerts power exactly equal to d times v infinity which is then dissipated in the boundary layers and wake. What that allows us to do is to conclude that the profile drag is uniquely related to the viscous stresses by the dissipation function, which I'll just write the definition again.
and the local contributions to this are always positive. Right? D of S is always greater than zero because mu plus mu t is always positive and d u d n squared is always positive. So this is a very useful interpretation since only using the momentum based definition of the drag, which was that it's the integral of tau wall ds over the airfoil plus the integral of neg negative due ds times ds in the airfoil and the wake is this is much more ambiguous. The second term always is going to have some locally negative contributions in regions of favorable pressure gradient where the flow is accelerating. And this first term will also have locally negative contributions when the flow is separated, when have we, we have reverse flow at the wall so that tau w is less than zero. Now since we broke up the drag as d prime equals d prime friction plus d prime pressure, And we have that d prime v infinity is k infinity. Then we get that the sum of these, the pressure and friction drag, must equal 1 over v infinity times the integral of the dissipation ds over the airfoil plus weight. This is just a rearrangement of this equation substituted into this equation. Now, we know this term depends only on the shear stress distribution, and this term depends only on the shear stress distribution. So therefore, we can deduce that the pressure drag term also only depends on the shear stress tau of s and n. So the conclusion is that the pressure field is not actually the cause of pressure drag. Pressure drag is actually a necessary, sorry, the pressure field is a necessary mechanism by which the power is transmitted from the body surface to the flow field where viscous power dissipation occurs. So all of the power needed to overcome moving an airfoil through the air at velocity v infinity is ultimately caused by viscous effects, viscous dissipation. Even though we make this distinction between friction and pressure drag, at the, in the end, it's all caused by viscous effects.